got there, Angus? Post is made of bricks. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. I'm your host, Kevin. Today I've got Angus with me. And of course, Mook. Say hi, Mook. Hello. Besides those two, the content for today, a Dodge Ramp truck. It's currently 10 degrees out this morning. We've got a battery, some gas, and a truck that sat for who knows how many years and who knows what condition. Let's get her going. Step one, move these big frozen hunks of limestone. Yep. I'm also a geologist. On top of an idiot or? On top of a medium sized hill. <laughs> cool. All right, she's dug out. Let's take a look at it. Thank you so much about dodges. Uh, I tell you what, if this is a big block, in fact, the last time we tried to revive a big block Dodge in the winter, it never made it on YouTube. Cause yeah, it, it didn't want to start. Before we did the red F100 and it barely turned over. And it was negative 13? Yeah. I think it's 13. Ooh. Is that 200% warmer? Does that mean we have a 200% chance? No. She's got a little rust. Ooh, there's the ice on it. He'd love to see that. Supposedly, I've heard the transmission's no good. Well, when's that, that ever stopped anybody? <laughs> I don't know if it stopped them, but it hasn't let them go again. Mm. Like I've said multiple times, it's very cold out today, so we're not going to screw around with this too much. This currently is more of a recovery mission. Uh, we need to get this on the trailer and get it back to the shop where we can mess with it. Do we? We haven't paid for it yet. So maybe we want to put a battery in it and see if it spins. My overall overarching three episode plan for this is 440 big block and ramp truck. 440 comes out of ramp truck. 12 valve Cummins I've had sitting around goes in ramp truck. 440 from ramp truck goes in various Dodge car. Various Dodge car goes on back of truck. Whole rig goes to race. You lost me at Three videos, which means you have three <laughs> weeks to do all these things and you led with come and swap. Good luck with that. We don't have an immediate plan for this, but it's a really cool truck and it was pretty local. It's only a half hour from home, so we're going to load this up and get it back there. Step one, though, for forward planning, let's see if the engine does spin so then we can, you know, start looking for some Dodge car laying around. This has split rims. Oh, <laughs> shit. Is this even going to fit in our shop? Well, it's a limo fit. Other than the limo. That's yeah. true. Is it froze or locked? That's what we were wondering. I think it's locked. Hopefully the keys are on the property. We got doors and no floors in the doors. She's rustier than I thought from the Facebook post. Thank you to everyone who sent me this on Facebook, by the way. You guys are the cause of my problems. The reason for my suffering, if you will. How do you open this one? I don't think you're supposed to. Because oh, this is a sleeper. sleeper. Somehow they've converted this space into a sleeper, which is like we got a crew cab and space for one. <laughs> 1995. That was the last time it was registered. That's Mook age. 27 years. Yeah. Mopar performance. Mopar and no car, homie. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, cool. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I was just about to say I should probably avoid putting weight on the seat. I bust the driver's door open and it slipped. My elbow went right through the seat cover. She's she's paper thin anyway. We do have keys. And the ignition does turn, so let's see if she spins. It's weight reduction. Look at this tie down you get. Look at that tie down you had. <laughs> I got nothing. I'm dead in the water. We're in far enough to turn the steering wheel to get it on a trailer, so maybe we just focus on that since it's, you know, 10 outside. Yeah, my frozen oh, face agrees. We're getting bombed. <laughs> Actually, you know what? That's motor spins. Okay, good. Check that off. Now let's put it on the trailer. Um. Maybe that's what a trans doesn't work. Just go into gear. The steering shaft might just be frozen. Because this is not twisting at all. Oh, there it goes. You just had a hammer on it. I mean, it's a Dodge. Come well, on. listen, I didn't own it. And <laughs> arguably, we don't own it yet. Yeah, I don't think I've paid for it yet. <laughs> <laughs> so the last thing I wanted to do, this break. should be a sign of growth, okay? Because the last Dodge I worked proofing. on on this channel, I broke like 10 things immediately. Before the camera was even on. <laughs> oh, wait, that was the first Dodge. Because the last Dodge I worked on on this channel was that green one. The green, the one bug-eyed looking? Not the big block, my swept line. 
Oh! He never I wasn't there for that. I do. There's a reason I don't own that one anymore. I'll put it that way. <laughs> All right, let's try to drag this thing out of here. Job, Angus, you did great. It's not going in the park anymore. <laughs> yes! You got it. This, this uh, shaft is just frozen and cold. It wasn't so bad. Are you just a little me? froze down. What do you mean it wasn't so bad? It sounded like the Space Shuttle Discovery in here. This thing was shaking apart. It, it was well. rattly, creaky, squeaky. Just like everything was shattering. Now for the hard part getting this on that. This is the one time I'm gonna be thankful I bought a stupid long trailer that beats the shit out of us going down the highway empty. If anyone has a solution for that, let me know. I'm thinking one of those suspended hitches? I don't know, it's just throughout all of Iowa. Cause they cut it in like what, eight foot sections on the road? So you just, okay, trailer. What was that noise again? <laughs> Question, will the back hit the ground before the front is up? Nah, we got time. Do we got battery? Mm, I don't know. No jumper cables, no problem. This is ridiculous. Oh god, we're never gonna clear that fender. Oh, you're saying with the box? Yeah. Oh, I didn't think of the box. Oh, no. We'll the see. box is going to hit. We'll You're hitting over here. Boop. If we get some kind of block under the rear, we might be able to get on top of that fender. Yeah? Oh, this is terrible. I knew it would be bad, but goddamn. <laughs> Whose idea was this? It was nothing, and it may very well be nothing. Scratch it! Do this ever, if you're stuck in a pickle and he has some railroad ties and some rocks, you can stack them up to, get, to make it clear your trailer. Mostly. There's a couple scratches on it now. But. Ingenuity. We do have engineering degrees, so there's that. This is my next concern. It's tail heavy. By a lot. Yes, it is. Come you bought a banana, not a trailer. Alright, we're in the bulkhead. Let's see how our weight is. Alright, let's strap the hell out of this and go home. On back roads. Dear DOT, please don't send me anything in the mail. I love you, I pay my taxes. You know something funny to move? What's that? This is the same route we took with the limo like two years ago. <laughs> yeah, I remember this road. Oh yeah, it is. That was the last time we hauled something way too long home, except for that one we drove. All right, really slow, sketchy ride home with my eyes on the tires the most I can, make sure we're not rubbing, scrubbing. Side note, everyone always asks, Kevin, how do you find cars? Out here it's easy, you just go drive, get off the main drive. For instance, there's a 67 Cougar, question mark.
mark. And if we go a little further, I see two dent sides. There's a Bronco right there. Hello, little buddy. Three dent side trucks, four dent side trucks. Cool. Oh. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven dent side trucks. There's more over here. And a Trager. All you have to do to find cars is get off the main drive where everyone travels all the time and sees stuff and buys it up. We're only three miles off the highway right now on a gravel road, and I understand a lot of the country doesn't have gravel roads, but you have less traveled roads. Find those, cruise around, see what you can find. The winter time's a good time when there's less foliage. You'll see stuff sitting back there in the woods. Be nice, courteous to the people. Make sure you make your intentions clear. Approach them in a calm manner. Maybe drive a cool old car if you have one so they understand that you know cars and they know the car or whatever they might sell you is going to a good home with a person who under, already understands them. So it's not hard. A lot of our stuff is word of mouth and a lot of it's Facebook, but if it's neither of those two, it's something we drove past on the side of the road and went, hey, I need to go talk to that guy. And you pull in, talk to him, next thing you know, you own a vehicle for the like, scrap price or a thousand bucks. Let's get this thing home, get it unloaded, and then I think we'll play with it when it warms up here in the next couple days. All right, moving forward. I'll tell you what, this is a lot easier than loading it. Ta-da! Alright, we'll be back when it's warm. Morning, Mook! Morning! How are you today, stinky? I'm pretty good. What are we up to? That. Yeah, we're back. I, they probably know that since this is the same video. Mm -hmm. You guys us, are so smart. Yeah, <laughs> for us it's been like, you know, three days later, two different vehicles later. But yes, we're back with the Ram truck. So like I just said, it's been a couple days. Ram truck's been sitting right here. We haven't touched it since it was offloaded. It's a nice, warm, 41 degree day on January 10th in yes. Iowa, which makes no sense. Winters, apparently, I, I don't know. I grew up in North Iowa. You grew up in Minnesota. Yeah. It's hell up there. Apparently down here, it might as well be Missouri. Yeah. Whatever, anyway. Truck, that's what you're here for, not weather and geography. <laughs> I've been doing some digging around for parts. Have not had any luck on a two-wheel drive NV4500 that fits behind a Cummins. If anyone has one of those, let me know because the next episode this will be in, hopefully will be that Cummins swap and I need some parts for that. I've got the 12 valve, I need everything behind it. So if you have one of those local to central Iowa, junkyarddigs1 at gmail.com, I appreciate that very much. In the meantime, what do you say we see if we can bring this 440 to life? Yeah, let's try. Well, Mook, let's start right where we left off. Oh. <laughs> well, that battery tray looks like it's doing a lot of work. Everything here is on its last leg. <laughs> Did you notice the terminal and the wire? Oh, yeah. Um, let's take a quick gander. What's this say? Diagnostic connector. What? It's 1972. Is this some aftermarket component on the truck, or was this a thing for Dodges? I don't know shit about shat when it comes to these Dodges, Mook. Heck. Me neither. Oh. Hello. Oh, it still doing? has its cats. Alright, what we got? Nothing. That doesn't feel like it's shifting. I gotta wonder if the trans is just not going in gear. Oh, there's an RPM gauge. Look at that. that yeah, know. a digital tachometer. It's got a RAM charger badge on the dash. That's bizarre. Oh, hang on. I just remembered from the boat video from a million years ago. Oh! Fuses. They kept the factory mouse nest at least. Check out the heater fuse. <laughs> I gotta wonder if that's part of our problem. That is nasty, Luke. Wow, it stinks in here. Yeah, you wonder. I wonder where it comes from, right? <laughs> well, I suppose I gotta go get the test light and start poking stuff. Was that a cat? Yeah, that was Hobbs. Why did the whole truck shake? There's also one right here. How heavy are these things? That's a huge pedal. <laughs> they want to make sure you know which one's go and stop. Yeah. Oh, oh it's gone. The master cylinder moves. It's also an adventurer. What? <laughs> yeah, I saw that. The doors both say adventurer. Hello, sir. Do you like the ramp truck? You've certainly made yourself at home here. This is Hobbs. You've probably seen him before. Probably in that video, actually. Hi, Hobbs. You're like our little mechanic here at, at home. Let's see where we lose it, Mook. Believe it or not, we have power there. <laughs> oh, 
I accidentally just figured out how to jump this. She didn't love it. <laughs> Oil looks excellent. Like textbook levels of full and nice and clean. Whoever sent me this in the mail once upon a time, thank you, this thing is awesome. Okay, we got power there. Obviously, as we just showed. We have power going into the cab. Yes, we do. It's at least getting to this connector. Through it? I don't know. We're gonna have to go in to find out. Ew, it's covered in poop now. <laughs> Gross. <Yuck. laughs> okay, I got either no ground or nothing up there. Under there we go. Your favorite, under the dash. I wonder what the history on this thing is. It's very unique. If they had that sleeper. I don't know if we've even showed it. That's literally like a big leather padded. Looks like an insane asylum room or what straight jacket room. I better know who you could ask about the history. Who's that? Whoever Rocco Cherio is. <laughs> Cherry. We got power to the main wire inside the cab. So it ain't there. Oh, it's heavy. It's a big house. There's like recently a mouse in it. Oh, it stinks. <laughs> it stinks real bad. A cap. A bunch of bolts. Oh, that's right. This is a Dodge. The power goes from the battery to the starter solenoid and then branches off that through that wire we've been tracing to the back of the dash on the amp meter to show if it's charging or discharging. And that's why all these cars and trucks from that are always burned to the ground. All the Dodges did, because they ran that heavy current wire up to the dash through the interior. No one else did that, I'll have you know. I guess I have to pull the dash apart to see if we can get power to this truck. <laughs> you can even take like a little, uh, like that power throat thing I got and send 12 volts and you can make certain things work. Like you can start the truck through that diagnostic connector. Oh, that's kind of cool. Dylan the cool everyone. I called Dylan to ask about some power issues because I'm pretty sure it's the amp meter. And he got on this tangent of what year is this truck? It's Sorry, got, I, got, I got excited. It's got a 77 grill and dash. Yeah, it's 77 grill and a post 75 dash. And then later. this Valen shouldn't have these lights unless it's like an early 70s. So we don't, but it shouldn't have the diagnostic connector unless it's a 77 or so. So it's a hodgepodge, that's for sure. If I ended up buying that truck, it would have been cool to do that and put the saddle on the back of that. And drive I was home. I was just thinking that. You would have left no. rust all the way to Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> both of them? Yeah. You would have got home with two halves of the car. <laughs> Wind erosion. <laughs> yeah, doing a swift 40 miles an hour. <laughs> all right, well, hey, I will catch you later, sir. Thank you much. Yeah, sure thing. Talk to you later. Yep, yeah, bye. Doing cool, everyone. A resident Mopar expert in Tennessee. All right, I'm gonna pull the dash out of this, splice that uh, ammeter into one wire so it's not gonna light anything on fire, and I'll see if that does it. Your steering wheel is rather squeaky. <laughs> Aw, the tack was cut. It must not have been from this truck. All right, well, now what are we looking at? Go away. <laughs> we'll get the mice. I think I just reach right there and wiggle them. Hey! There, see? Fixed. Nice. That's all it took. One big wiggle. I'm sure that definitely won't light on fire. Do I got headlights? Let's go look, Bingo. Come on. No, don't trip me. Yes. Ah, there's no horn, Mook. <laughs> we gotta sell it. Throw it away. For sale. All right, we got power. I'm gonna leave that dash cover off because I foresee this happening again and again. And again, until I eventually cave in and take that off and hardwire it. Let's move on to up under the hood, see if we can get this thing to have spark. Let's get this air cleaner out of here. Oh, is that what I think it is? It is! We have never dealt with one of these on the channel. I've never even dealt with one. That is a thermo quad. To quote Dylan, they're not that bad. Everyone's just wieners about them. I don't know what that meant either. Oh no. <laughs> it's El Stucco. Seeing that this thing seized up, I'm gonna go on a limb and say whatever fuel is in this, we don't want in the motor, or we're gonna have a repeat of the Bronco, where it glues all the valves into the valve guide, and then we bend all the push rods. 
That's big sad. No bueno. Let's check for a spark. These are electronic ignition. All the way back in 1970. I don't know. I don't even know what year this truck is actually. Dodge was a little ahead of the times with their electronic ignition module, which is that that guy, I believe. Uh, they love to fail though. They break all the time. So if you have one of those, make sure you have a spare one with you. But yeah, they got rid of points pretty early and went to that. Mook, would you like to do the honors up here? Nope. Pretty please? Nope. Okay, well maybe I can get it to stay here and you can just <laughs> stare at it. I've played that game before. <laughs> all right, ready? You got spark. She doesn't really have the whole cranking thing down, but we'll get to that. What to do, let's pop our cap off quick, Mook. And get a look in there. Never mind, Mook. That looks like a giant pain in the ass. Let's put that back together and see if it'll pop off. All right. Well, she's got oil. Let's see what happens. It's got a nice rhythm to it. Take your guess, Mook. How do the plugs look? Probably purple. <laughs> That's an interesting guess. I mean, there's almost a purple hint to it. You know, maybe we can just pull four plugs out, and then it'll be able to spin fast enough. <laughs> and we'll put them in one at a time as it's running. You're a genius, Kevin. I know. <laughs> I mean, how could I get this far without a brain like that? All right, watch that guy for spark. Spark goo. see anything. Hmm. Maybe I do need to get that cap off. I should have known I'd have to do this. How am I supposed to get that back on? Maybe you should just get your giant pliers. <laughs> it might break. But oh, you, yeah. you'll we can get, get her off. off. Yeah. <laughs> Did it just rust off? No, I think I got it. Well, it looks perfectly fine. <laughs> Let me clean this spot and this. Clean the carbon bit in the middle and stick it back together. That'll fix it. All right, that's got part. That means our cap and rotor's working. Nope. Nothing. Nada? Nada. Okay, so I just tested this by grounding the plug out and then sticking this right here where the screwdriver is in the cap and I got spark between the wire and the screwdriver but nothing on the spark plug. So what that tells me is in fact, our plugs are so carboned up that they're not producing spark, which is crazy. I've never seen that. They must've just sat in the perfect conditions inside that motor to where they just got super dirty. So I will clean this up and we'll try it again. All right, a little bit of sandpaper. Let's see if that does anything. It's sparking from the center electrode to the side. What the hell? Let me see if I can do that again to get it even more on camera. I know I said, <laughs> you said more on. I know. <laughs> that is crazy. All right, I guess new plugs. Yeah. I don't even know what's happening there. Cracked porcelain maybe? Weird. Strange world, a lot of smells. We just had to say it was warm out today, didn't we? Yeah. Went to lunch, grabbed some spark plugs. The wind picked up, the clouds came in, and now it's like really humid and wet out. And it went from feeling like 50 to 20. Speaking of plugs and temperature, I have new plugs. Uh, they didn't quite have the right temp in town. These are RJ14s instead of 12s, but it'll probably be okay. Hey, look at me really quick. Why? What is... Hey, no! Hey! Oh. <laughs> Mediocre connection going again. Should have got new battery terminals when we were there. One of these times we'll get good at this move. I don't know. Practice makes statistically been, higher averages. It's been like five years. I feel like if we're not good at it yet, I don't know <laughs> if we will get. Alright, you ready? No, hold on. There's a little sparkies. Is there? Yep. Well, let's pull all the plugs out of her, throw a little oil down the cylinders to help with that painfully slow rotation, and then put new plugs in and see if she lights off. That's all eight. They're very carbony and dirty looking. I've never seen plugs not spark before. 
Uh, there's a first for everything, and if it's going to be anywhere, it'll be on a Dodge. Let's get some WD-40 down those cylinders and spin her over, eh, Mook? Yeah. I don't want to go too much and flood them out again like we did with that Chevy in last week's video. Because those were a lot easier to get to than these. These are a pain in the ass. Crazy headers on this thing. Or manifolds, if you will. I saw that. Where's the hole? Is that the hole? No, this. Wait. Where be? Okay, I just stuck my finger in there and found it. What the hell? All right, brain, it's right there. <laughs> what is happening right now? <laughs> Let's get the joke motor out. Have Kevin try to find the joke spark plug hole. It's a prank. There isn't one. It's a prank. <laughs> what the hell? There it goes. All that for that. <laughs> Our cats had time to use the bathroom and make two little leaf piles to cover it by the time you did that one cylinder. I know. <laughs> I'm being slow. <laughs> make fun of the slow guy. <laughs> you know what? Three's good enough. All right, let's wing her over. Let that get on the rings, kind of work its way around for anything else that might be a little sticky. And we'll be good to go. I honestly don't think this is the problem at all. I think our starter's probably weak or that's just a lot of motor to turn over in the fleeting temperatures that we have today. My fingers hurt. Ready to move? Ready. That's just not a fast starter. Like, <laughs> did you see it wind down when I let off? Mm-hmm. Is it gonna rain or something? It's not fun out here. Like, it was a nice morning. <laughs> it sucks out here now. All right, we've been clearing this out for a little bit and we discovered something. Go ahead, Mook. Right there, as you can see, we've got Spark escaping. It escaped. It's on the loose. It thinks it has a get out of jail free card. I don't know what's going on there, but we'll have to get some tape in there or something and clean that up because that might be where all our juice is going because we still don't have very good spark on those plugs. Let me get a heck. Heck, I can get you a uh, Hobbs. Nope, I'm good. Don't touch me. <laughs> Hi, Hobbs. All right, we've been doing some science with different plugs and stuff, and we've got, I don't know, i got a wire. It's something weird going on here. Go ahead and crank it, Mook. This is right off the coil. <laughs> Nothing. Now, if I take this wire and I jump it to here, we'll have spark. Go ahead. Shaft in the wiener on the oh boy, it, it happened, happened again. again. <laughs> this is just the right height, and it goes through my arm and out. You know what? Anyway, we're gonna take this wire now. So, this is where it gets weird. If I hold this without shocking myself, I'm gonna stand nice and clear of all the metal. But if I hold this an inch away and you watch that electro, this is the old plugs, mind you. Go ahead, Moot. Keep going. That's bizarre. There's there's science that happens, but I, I need to think about this for a little bit to figure out what I'm watching right now, because further out, that thing is excellent spark. All right, here's what I've done. Some jankery shit. I went in with a screwdriver and opened that plug gap way up. Go ahead, Mook. <laughs> it still ain't great, but it's better. Fun fact, I threw this random like AC Delco plug I had sitting around in. It did excellent. It had great spark. These champions suck. <laughs> I don't I don't know why that's happening. I still don't know what to do either. Clearly can't use these. These are wrong. But do I just open them all up a whole bunch and throw them in? Why not? <laughs> you know, it's cold. We're running out of time. Let's do it. Okay. Those are all gapped excessively large and reinstalled. Let's hit it with a little fuel. Spin it over see what it does. Ow, my chest cavity. <laughs> the cat's putting on a show. Alright, back to the good stuff. Do something, please. It's hey. thinking 
about it. Get rid of that non-flammable gasoline, get something a little more flash to it. What do you know? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yell at me in the comments for using brake clean. It's just it's ether. <laughs> Consistently running on that one cylinder. Mm -hmm. No change. So it's not that. I, I see that. I disconnected that and it fired a cylinder and actually spun backwards for a half second. Really? Yeah. Can I get this carb to open up any? She's trying. She's she's showing some life here. I can get that carb to open up a lot, Lee. <laughs> here we go, everyone. Hold on to your belts. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. Fight the life. <laughs> Hell yes. Man, that thing wiggles. I know, it, it wasn't running great, but it kind of <laughs> spun more than the last time. Him hop. Him hop. <laughs> All right, fresh camera battery. Fresh little can of gas right here. Let's fill up our floats. See if this thermal quad will do anything. <laughs> well, it's prime to say the least. held on the back of the dash because if I let go it died. Oh, <laughs> uh, something smoking over there behind you? Yeah, the ballast resistor is on fire. Dodgers use a ballast resistor and that it's is ready. what puts power to the coil at 9 volts instead of 12. And I was questioning that, I just couldn't find it, but in classic Dodge fashion it seems to have unveiled itself. As... Yeah, it sent out a smoke signal for you. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm over here <laughs> and I'm on fire. <laughs> Goodbye. All right, I found a piece of wire that was stuck in something over there that didn't look that important. There's a piece of the old ballast resistor. A clean bit of wire there. Boom. Emergency roadside repair ballast resistor. Ready? Yep. Idling. Yeah. I got 50 psi oil. Oh, now she's really idling. Look at that. Oh. Well, let's hook up the uh, boat tank and see if it'll run. Okay. Got ourselves a fuel tank. Hooked up to the old mechanical pump. I guess I'll spin it over and see if that pumps some fuel, eh? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a good pump. <laughs> That'll help mask the mouse smell. Also, we flushed some bad gas out. Yeah. All right, that's hooked up. I'm going to try it again. We should get the same results probably, but instead of going over there, we go up this time. Good. Oh, man. I 
thought that was too good to be true. It was nice and clear, at least. That carburetor is such a weird shape. Like a little fountain. <laughs> fountain of sadness. <laughs> well, I just want you to run long enough to see if the transmission is actually bad. Is that too much to ask for? Yes. <laughs> Bubbling out the top. How much of a nightmare is it to take the top of this car off? Pretty decent sized one. Kevin, you're being all wiener about it. Dylan was right. <laughs> Here's what we can do. If we don't give it any more fuel, it can't flood, right? Sure. Yeah. And the bowls are full right now, right? Yeah. So all we gotta do is wait for it to quit pumping what's in the line, and it'll idle long enough that I can throw in gear and make sure nothing happens, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, assuming this is a 727, the pump doesn't run in park, which is what it's been in this whole time. The pump runs in neutral and drive and reverse and all those other gears. So with that being said, if you get an old 727 or an old Mopar up and running, put it in neutral first to let it run the trans pump for a little bit and then attempt to drive, get that fluid moving. Could be wrong, but I think you have to check the fluid in neutral. Check when hot, idle in neutral. It can't be anything normal like park. You know, there's a parking pole to keep you from getting ran over. Hey, actually, Come around the other side. Look at the shift lever for me. Does it move? I do see components moving. Yeah, the linkage just fell off. Oh, that's good. The trans might be just fine. <laughs> I guess I'll crawl underneath and check. Welcome to underneath the truck. As you can see, right here there, we have a parking pole thingy right up there. And here is the linkage. So I am going to ever so gracefully just, you know, eh, stick that in and remember to fix it later. Also, damn, where'd the floor go? That thing back here is, well, it's, it's pretty bad too, but I see air brakes way back there. That's concerning. I'm sure that'll be a problem. Just, you know, not right now. All right, Mook, try for a drive or something. I don't know. Hey, if I had a guess, this transmission might still work. It was just the linkage fell off. And at some point, someone may have tried to get it running, ran into that problem, and decided the trans was bad. It also may have totally been out of fluid. I don't know. But I really don't want to pull a trans, and I'd really like to drive this around the yard today. So let's hope this does it. not happy. I turned it off because the dash started smoking. What was that noise? It was trying to go in gear though. It was. I saw it. And yeah. then, like I said, the dash caught on fire. Oh. <laughs> you predicted that though. Yep. <laughs> sounded like we suddenly turned this into a ice cube crusher. She's low. She needs more fluid. Okay. Let's top that off again see if I can tighten that leaky hose and try it again. We'll fill this up so she can run off the bowls again. Ran for quite some time off the bowls. I have dumped every drop of trans fluid we had on the farm into the transmission. She's got probably four more quarts than I had before, so if that doesn't do it, I don't know what will. Ha <laughs> ha 
Hey, it moved! <laughs> it moved! It drives in low! So we know our trans is good, Mook. Well, no, actually we don't. We know our trans is bad. We think. We think that our trans maybe doesn't kind of work. We have reverse, and if I pull it down into low, I think it moves around in a forwardly direction. And beyond anything, this thing right now is in the middle of our driveway. And we need it to move. I say we run the to town quick, grab ourselves a spread board adapter and a carb, and swap that out and see if we can have ourselves a truck that drives around. Well, to say the least, it's been a good long time since we'd have Mook uh, have a couple of drinks and rebuild the carburetor, and I think that's exactly what this video needs. I'm gonna turn you loose. I'm gonna run. <laughs> no. It's also the first time on the channel we've ever had lights. I'm blind. <laughs> All right, I'll go get your kid. Hey! Don't throw it, don't throw it. Okay, carbonator rebuild kit. Does this come with a corn cob? Get out of here, box. Whoa! This is a weird piece. Look at this! Where'd you go? I found a weird little umbrella. Is there a mini Mary Poppins that goes with this? <laughs> I don't know why you're laughing, that's an honest question. Okay, this appears to be a four barrel carburetor. I do see some pine needles in it, so that is a bad sign. What are you doing? I'm still trying to figure out how lighting works. I'm still trying to figure out everything. Tell me your secrets. I'm doing the accelerator pump first. Hey, give me the screw. Why am I putting the bolts in here when I have a bolster right next to me? Where'd you get a bolster and what is that, Mook? Where'd you get this bolster, Kevin? <laughs> a bolster is this device that holds your bolts for your project. And then it turns into whack-a-mole. That right there is a silicone chemical resistant, heat resistant, lifetime warrantied bolt organizing mat <laughs> made by Bolster. Bolster! You can check them out at bolster.com right now. I will put a link on the screen to where you can get an exclusive 20% off the Bolster line of products. Check them out, bolster.com. And of course, a large thanks to Bolster for supporting our channel. Hey, that looks like a newer power valve. I'm still taking it off. Have I been into that carpet? You can't stop me. Is that a good carburetor? This is the tiniest carpet I've ever seen in my life. These are just in my way. Just throw them away. Whatever. Hey! What's up? Stay inside. There's scaries out there. A tiny little pine cone just came out of this carburetor. Here, I want to get you this. Oh! Put it on the ground. This. Ew! <laughs> get out of here. No, thank you. Okay. What you got there? Trash. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Get out of here. It's a good no. <laughs> Where can people find some of these wonderful items, Mook. Our kitchen. <laughs> Junkyarddigs.com. Hey! <laughs> Great merch push. Get it off me! What's in that? Water? No, that's that one. I have two waters. <laughs> oh! That was... Never mind. Bolster! Oh, there's you! What is that? Oh! So that moves. Bonk! Kevin! What's up? Shit your pants somewhere else and on your own time. Excuse me? Yeah, that's what you're supposed to say. <laughs> I'm gonna go around the circle though. Or that's a trick I learned at the paint shop. This ain't no paint bucket. If you couldn't- I understand! <laughs> We're not atomizing paint here! Look at that! A bowl! <laughs> The metering block came with it? I've never seen that. <laughs> this is what you call a power valve, and it's already loose. Look at that, I just had to poke it with a wrench. Here, you kiss it. <laughs> the gasket didn't split. Everybody always thinks there's two gaskets on that. But there isn't. That's the right gasket, there we go. Get out of here. I don't know why I'm working in a drawer. Yeah, why are you working in a drawer? I don't know, Kevin, I just said I don't know. Here's the other little guy. Hey, get off of there. Where's your get off of there? Are you farting? Nope. I think you're farting. Nope. <laughs> See? You're ruining my show. Okay, there's that. Look at that. Look at that. You see that? 
Oh, so this is the gasket that sticks. Okay. Get out of there. There, I got some gunk out of here for you. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. How do the Jets look? Are the Jets dirty? The Jetsons are doing fine. The bowls actually are like super clean. This is a really clean car besides the what's open on top here. Just put it back together with a new needle up front. If that bowl fails, <laughs> not on me. <laughs> if this one does, it's not on me. <laughs> it's on Crown Apple. You just seen that the larger gasket goes on the top. No. The larger gasket goes against the top of the bowl. Yeah, you tell them. Yeah. <laughs> Did you just open a koozie? Have you told them about the screaming deal they didn't get moved? You can scream. <laughs> Fun deal. You have free will. If you want to scream, go ahead. I keep putting this metering block on upside down. You dingus. There we go. Hang on. No, that's right. Hmm. I just don't know about this, Kevin. Here we go. Did I get both gaskets? Yeah, I got both gaskets. Wait, I forgot a part. Kevin, why'd you let me do this? What? Can, can you stop you. pooping? Make sure you get the old ones out of the bowls. I did. Okay, sweet. That's what I used the little tiny screwdriver for. Not gonna lie, haven't been paying attention. I know. You have faith in me. Yes, exactly. That's what's happening. <laughs> Snug. Almost like a bug in a rug, but not quite. It's not working. Doesn't help that I can see like three of them. <laughs> Good job. It works. <laughs> <laughs> Someone dropped their water. <laughs> Good thing it was just water. It'd be expensive otherwise. <laughs> the chair was going down and it was throwing me off. Okay, that's done. Now I can put that guy back on. Boop, 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 boop. Boop. And there you go. There's half a carburetor rebuild. This is not tuning or anything. So adjustments and whatnot will need to be addressed. Your transfer slots are ginormous. What? Transfer slots. <laughs> we'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Make my seat. I don't know. Oh. What you doing, Mook? Look at the snowflakes. Good morning, everyone. It is the next day. It is drastically colder outside. I have unbolted the thermo quad. It is good to go. Into the trash. And now I will install our adapter to change from a spread bore to a square bore. Woohoo! Today is Friday the 13th, Mook. Did you know that? Mm -mm. Today is also the day that my buddy uh, Phoenix, Wrenching Redneck on YouTube, his daughter's being born. So head over to his channel and give him a congrats in the comments somewhere. Let's get this holly bolted up, see how Mook did on the rebuild, and see if this thing's gonna behave a little better. I imagine it will. What do you think, Mook? I really don't know. <laughs> I mean, the carb looks good when I opened half of it. Watch the other half is actually just Jump. destroyed, it's yeah. A, it's colder than an analogy out here today, so I'm just gonna get this bolted on and then we'll be back. All right, Mook, you ready? Yep. Moment of truth. Well, the back bowl leaks. <laughs> There's no accelerator pump cam. The cam's missing. Oh my god. Oh, what the hell? The squirter block is missing. <laughs> We're off to a great start here. Yeah, Mook. we really are. Hey, look at that. All right, Mook, you ready? Yes and no. Cranking better than it was the other day, and we got it to fire off the other day. 
Is it dumping fuel while it's cranking? If it is, it's flooding out terribly. It's dry in here. For shits and giggles, I'll kind of choke on I don't know. Good thing I have shits and giggles. I guess she needed a lot of fuel. Let's try that. It fell off again because it doesn't say it's in gear. All right, I'm sick of that thing falling off. Especially if I don't have brakes, I'm gonna need it to stop. So I got myself a set of permanent pliers and put those on there, and I should hold it in place. All right, that's fixed. This thing's got three drive shafts. <laughs> Holy hell! What have we got ourselves into, Mook? A lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. I don't know if we still want to build this. I mean, true cap. Dodge ramp truck is just those words are cool, but man, there's a good bit of rust in here And I don't have any supporting parts for Dodges if this was a Ford we'd have all this stuff already I don't know. Maybe we'll still build it. Maybe someone Watching the video will cut me a nice fat check and they can deal with taking this home These are both options junkyarddigs1 at gmail.com and I ain't talking 3,500 bucks It's a Mopar, you know, gotta, gotta get that Mopar tax Ready, move? Yep <laughs> Smoky under the hood. That's eh, probably on fire. It's a dodge. We did all that for nothing. I guess we really got the last little bit of life out of her in the forward gear the other day because it moved. And now, even in low, it's just making that chonk, chonk, chonk noise. If I'm not mistaken, the reason I, it worked in low, or I thought it would work in low, was because the reverse band and the low band are the same band but then drive is a whole nother band. And I think the drive clutches were out, but I thought the low bands and clutches were still good. Apparently that's not the case anymore. The trans is obviously a pile of little bits of metal sloshing around inside there. I was hoping that we could get the new carb on it and run well enough for us to kind of limp it along, but nope, she's done. At this point, I don't know what the hell to do with this thing. Uh, it would be cool to put a Cummins in it and build it, but it's rustier than I thought and like I mentioned earlier I have no supporting parts for this because it is Dodge if This was an old Ford. I'd be set if it was an old Chevy. I'd be okay But there's no Dodges in this area, so I don't even have a good parts supply up here With that being said if anyone does have a two-wheel drive NV 4500 Let me know if you are in the central Iowa area that might enable me to be motivated to, to put a Cummins in this still you never know We'll see. Unfortunately, a little bit of a disappointing episode here today. We didn't get her to run and drive, but hey, you don't win them all. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Check out the other content we have on the channel. Thank you, Junkyard Mook, for your help and for rebuilding the carb. We'll see you guys right here for another episode of Junkyard Digs next week. Peace.